We are now being joined by Dr. Samuel Ilubekai, a former national president of the Nigerian Institution of Structural Engineers. He's going to be giving us an appraisal for the extant structure, you know, building laws in Lagos State. And good afternoon, sir. Such tragic, um, such tragic situation to have you under. But can you speak on um, what we've been hearing about the structural integrity of the building and the questions um, that get thrown into um, whether or not a building can be built over a certain um, uh, story limit? Thank you very much for this uh, wonderful opportunity. Uh, I'd like to start by um, giving my condolences to the families that have lost one, their, their family members in this collapse. And then uh, also pray that God grants them, I mean, a befitting resting place in uh, his heavenly kingdom. Um, very simple, there's no limit as we say, uh, to what you can actually do structurally, so long as you do it well. After all, we are seeing much higher rise buildings overseas. Uh, and uh, it is particularly sad for us because the professionals that are working those structures out there, we have competent hands here too, who are more or less at par with their level of knowledge, you know, so when things like this 21-story building fall down, you, it, it becomes very embarrassing, you know, especially for uh, an organization like the Nigerian Institution of Structural Engineers that has register of sound minds to whom these kind of structures are bread and butter in this country. So, but the but, big question will be, looking at the way the building collapsed, yes. what, will, what will be the immediate cost or what do you think was responsible for pulling down the building the way it did? Well, um, it will be premature to just hazard a guess because uh, with this kind of collapse, there is need for the institutions concerned to conduct thorough investigations, scientific investigations to arrive at the true causes. But from the pattern of what we can see, yes, that's what we want to hear. Very clearly, uh, uh, with all the pictures that have been circulated and all that, you can easily hazard a guess and say: number one, poor workmanship; number two, bad materials usage; number three, um, you, you want to also put that on. Um, Poor handling, project management, mm. poor handling. Because before this building came, came down, there would have been telltale signs. And, and just to interrupt you, speaking of those telltale signs, back in February, we're seeing that a memo was circulated. Um, one of the engineers pulled out of the project, citing some concerns of his. They even asked to have their logo taken down from the, um, from the front of the uh, property. Now, my question is, if a developer sees that there's an issue with a building, so much so that they have to withdraw themselves, is it not, is there no further way to take it? Do they not have a moral obligation to report it to the authorities or to someone else with um, a higher authority? I, I, I just assume, rather than just withdrawing and leaving it, knowing very well that there's something wrong. Well, um, as far as that is concerned, first and foremost, you know that the client continuing with the building is purely a situation of profiteering at all costs, motivated by greed. If I'm your consultant and I get to the point where I advise you that what I'm seeing is not right, you heed my advice. But the situation that has taken place here is, listen to me, I'm the owner of the money. Look at the, 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 the project signboard, as it is. The name of the archi consulting architect, the name of the contractor, and all fall within the same line. So it's more or less like doing direct labor for a 21-story building. It is suicidal. Direct labor on a 21-story building. Moreover, as it is, some of the pictures, like I said, that were circulated show very clearly that the delivery 
was faulty. The building itself was faulty. It's not, it's not, it's not a, a two-story building, not a three-story building, a 21-story building. So, it, so if, a if the structural engineer of a building says that there's issues, do they not have someone else to report it to? Does well, it as it is, uh, don't forget that uh, for, for a project of this magnitude, the various regulatory authorities would have been there. If, for instance, uh, the authorities were here last week, and then all of a sudden they are now seeing a different uh, team of engineers at work, that's an alarm bell. That's an alarm bell. All right, um, I would like to find out from you. Certainly, you've been in the system, and there have been lacunas and lapses in legislations. What do you think of this particular um, incident, or this particular um, collapse, will actually trigger? in terms of legislation moving forward. Beautiful. What this collapse should trigger is a direct empowerment of the structural engineering practitioners. A direct empowerment of the structural engineering practitioners. You know, this building has come down. All of a sudden, everybody is talking about the structural engineer. Mm. But the government looks the other way. We know you are there, but we don't recognize you. Deal directly with them. Empower them. Empower the structural engineer with the law. You see, now, if you arrest the owner of this property, those who have died have died. The solution is competent practice of structural engineering from the word go. And all this will be history. Like I told you, the Register of Nigeria Institute of Structural Engineers have names of qualified hands to whom this kind of development is bread and butter. Take my word, bread and butter. They will discharge this responsibility without betting an eyelid. What about the enforcement, sir? That enforcement is in the hands of the government as it is presently. It's in the hands of the government. Because there are building codes for every state. Good. Now, building codes are your guide to say, look, if you are going to do this, you must fall within this range. This is what you should do. This is what you should do. They guide you, to, especially in design. You understand me? Now, if you have designed and you have gone to site with your client and then you have advised your client over and over again, to the point at which you now decide to leave. You understand me? It means that what you designed for is completely being set aside and something else is being done. And like I said, for a 21-story building like this, it is suicidal. So what should happen to the adjoining buildings beside it? Beautiful. Now, you can imagine a 21-story concrete structure coming down. Mm -hmm. The shock waves that that structure coming down has sent into the ground, has traveled kilometers away from the incidence of this building. Mm -hmm. And what it means is that it could have undermined the integrity of the foundation of the other two buildings that are standing. Because the foundations were not designed for such forces. All right. Good. Now, can you explain what you're doing, looking at the screen and those? Beautiful. Yes. You can see the pattern of failure of this building. Yes. The entire floors just came down on each other like a pack of cards. Neat. Neatly, as if somebody arranged them. This is textbook failure. Textbook failure. But again, like I said, we will not preempt the cause because the statutory agencies that are supposed to actually investigate will come and do so. But it is, it is clear where we are heading. It's very clear. Textbook failure. That's what it is. What will the likely repercussions of such a catastrophe be, especially for the profession? Beautiful. Now, the repercussions are these. The public will now carry in their mind the kind of psychological fear that any time they go into a building of this nature, at the back of their mind, they are praying that it should not come down. And it is very, very sad because 
it subjects the users to kind of psychological trauma. Number two, let me ask this question. Assuming this structure sailed through, they finished it and then it was now being occupied. You know, these people who do these things, in fact, they lay all their emphasis on clean finishing. When they finish the structure, you call them, mm, fantastic. Meanwhile, the structure is distressed. Assuming the structure had been finished and it had been occupied and all that, and this happened. My goodness. You can imagine the level of the disaster. In fact, God, God is really our helper in this country. All right, let's take it back to your previous statement. You made a statement about textbook failure. Yes. Please, expatiate on that. Yes. What do you textbook mean? failure means that it, it, it's a pattern that is, that is very, very clear. The entire building just came down mm. together. You see it? So it means that the supports actually gave way. You understand me? So underneath. Yeah. So it is very possible. It's very possible, for instance, for this structure to have actually swayed. Okay. It's very possible for it to have fallen to the side. Mm. In which case, you will say, "Oh, it was wind effect. Right. Something pushed it in that direction." That would have been possible. But you can see that it all came down. You know, one layer on top of each other, as if something melted. You understand me? Okay. As if layer by layer, whatever was supporting it, just like brrr, brrr, just went off like that. You see, the true cause of which will be determined from uh, expert uh, test and all that. How does one go about reforming, um, reforming the entire process of property development? It seems like there's a lot of loopholes, a lot of um, uh, pen. Uh, Pennywise, uh, pound, foolish. pound foolish, a lot Decisions. of those kinds of greedy situations going on. Yes. How can reform take place? Yes, what I will, what I will uh, 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 recommend as it is, uh, is that in the built environment, there are seven key professionals. You have the architect, the builder, the surveyor, the quantity surveyor, uh, you have the electrical personnel, you have the mechanical personnel, then you have the structural personnel. Call them the electrical practitioner, the mechanical practitioner, or the structural practitioner. I'm trying to leave the adjective or the noun, engineer or engineering. Empower these people directly and let them do what they know how to do. Okay, now, let me, please, uh, my question is in two prongs. Firstly, we look at, it's over five years between the Lecky Gardens building collapse and this one on Gerard Road. What are the similarities? One, and two, have we learned any lessons between then and now to probably help uh, avert such grave danger? Well, um, uh, I'll tell you categorically that we've not learned any lesson. And I'll also tell you, I'm not, it's not doomsday prophecy. Uh, the bubble had not yet burst. Because you can see that from small structures, two, three, four story well, buildings, was five, was five, five, five story, story. Yes, now you have gone to 21. 21. It tells you that the situation is actually getting worse. And like I keep saying, rather than have police all over the place, policing this and that and all that, you are, you are, you are adopting a fire brigade approach to something that can be done well. What I'm saying is prevent structures from collapsing through the competent and qualified discharge of structural engineering responsibilities. Are you saying that between 2016, March of 2016, and today, yes. nothing was done in terms no. of... You have not achieved anything. If, assuming this is a one-story building that came down, evaluate it. At that time, you were talking about five-story building. If today the 21-story building has come down, it means that you've not learned anything. It means that, in fact, the whole, the professionals in the built environment have been taken for a ride. That is what I am saying. Now, 
you need to you need to regulate properly in that sector you need to regulate properly let's start it off from the executive independent inquiry made up of seasoned professionals and practitioners certainly is that the right step yes i want to um, appreciate the governor and his team uh, it's very apparent that the governor has been properly briefed and the governor too has uh, equally overnight picked the engineering language, the structural engineering language, and is speaking it. Uh, I'm particularly pleased that this time all the engineers have been separated. Mm -hmm. It's like the chicks are coming to roost. All right. So he has been very specific on what I said earlier, dealing directly with structural engineers. So you have the structural engineer there because it's a structural engineering problem. Of course, well, structural engineers alone will not do it. So you have town planners, you have this, you have that. All I would have actually uh, advised for that is involve the complete built environment team so that nobody will be left out. At least it would have been a seven-member panel, that kind of a thing. But what he has done so far is very, very okay and straight to the point. Secondly, he's enabling this investigation by a law. Governor, sir. Do the deed once and for all. Enable structural engineering practice with a law once and for all. Take the bull by the horn. Be the state that is leading it, and the federal government will follow. Enable the practice of structural engineering by the law. Perhaps the magnitude, you asked a question just now, what will, the, what will this collapse bring to the table? It has brought structural engineering to the table. Suddenly, it is very clear that the discipline that is aired here is structural engineering. So do it once and for all. Perhaps it should be the recommendation of this committee. Back the practice, competent and qualified practice of structural engineering in Nigeria by law. So that you, you, those who know what this is all about are the ones that are doing it. And that way, all the fire brigade things about this agency, this one and all that, don't, doesn't need to come on board anymore. Because you are dealing with the competent practice. And by so doing also, if something like this happens, you know straight away which group of engineering professionals you are dealing with. In this case, structural engineers. What is their organization? Nigerian institution of structural engineers. So you don't need to dissipate energy. When something like this comes up, you pick your phone, you call the president of the Nigerian Institute of Structural Engineers. President of Nigeria Institute of Structural Engineers, meet me in my office tomorrow morning. There has been a collapse. By virtue of this law which we put in place in Lagos, it is one of your members. And that solves it. So the governor is on the right track, but he still needs to be encouraged for him to utilize mm -hmm. the political will to do this once and for all for this country. And if Lagos does it, Lagos will etch her name on the sands of history. I want to say many thanks so. to you yeah. for your time today. And we'll also be monitoring situations from the life sites of 34 B, C, and D. Gerard Road, Gerard Road certainly. Ikoi, Lagos State.